हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू जावा चार्टर वेरी हैप्पी दशहरा टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप यू गाइस आर एन्जॉइंग द फेस्टिव सीजन एज मच एज आई एम इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द पार्ट टू ऑफ द ऑनलाइन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन यू नो विच वॉज द प्री रिक्विजिट फॉर द एक्चुअल इंटरव्यू फॉर वन ऑफ द एम एन सीज एंड most of the questions in the part 2 uh, are based on java 8 and microservices and in the part 3 i will cover the spring boot uh, questions uh, so the questions are not like uh, uh, very much but uh, i have divided uh, this uh, series in uh, three parts so that uh, uh, the job seekers uh, and viewers can uh, go through it easily uh, yeah so without further delay let's uh, get started so as i mentioned before uh, these questions are mainly on java 8 and microservices so to continue with uh, uh, where i left in part 1 uh, question number 8 uh, again this is a java 8 question uh, which of the following is the correct lambda expression uh, which add two numbers and return their sum <coughs> so options uh, are integer a uh, integer b uh, and then lambda expression return a plus b uh, ab the lambda expression uh, in the curly bracket uh, written a plus b uh, the, uh, option 3 is both of the above or option d is none of the above uh, this is a little bit complicated if we uh, you know uh, look at the syntax but the correct answer is both of the above so here is the explanation um, uh, so we must know that a lambda expression is a concise way of defining a function in one line of code right uh in this case it is a function which takes two numbers as a parameters and return their sum so if we look at the option 1 in that uh you know what happens is uh, uh it takes a two integer parameters a and b and returns the sum of those two numbers option number 2 is again a valid lambda expression which takes two parameters a and b but this time they can be of any type <coughs> right in option 1 it was integer and uh, mention for a and b but in the second case it can be of any type and it returns their sum so therefore both the options are valid question number 9 uh, it was a core java question so what will be the printed so uh, sorry if you guys cannot see it properly but uh, uh, there is a class employee where uh, private uh, field variable uh, name is defined as a uh, string then there is a constructor of employee class uh, with a parameter name and there is another uh, method uh, called get name okay and uh, there is a set uh, declare of type employee uh, okay <coughs> and we have added four uh, uh, elements here in the set okay of type employee so uh, we can see that john john ron and john and there is one sys out statement where uh, at the end uh, employee dot size is get it's printed so i was wrong <coughs> for this because i had uh, Uh, provided a wrong answer but the correct answer is a 4 yeah so you may think that the output is 3 but uh, yeah it's a 4 you are right you got it right it's a 4 uh, it will not print so as we know uh, you know duplicate la objects are removed in a set based on that equals and hash code method but here is a twist here the output is 4 because the names john and ron are each added once to the set but the constructor for an employee class creates a new object for each one since each object is unique for all objects are stored in set and the size of the set is 4 <coughs> sorry so here i have added the um, uh, output screenshot also the same class i i brought uh, in my intellij id and i tried to run the program and it printed 4 yeah you can see uh, at the down question number 10 Uh, it was a java 8 based question so uh, <coughs> uh, there was a code snippet snippet was provided one for loop okay uh, then uh, inside that there is another for loop and uh, inside that a equal to b plus c is printed and then again uh, after uh, uh, this uh, for uh, two for loop there is a, again uh, another for loop and a equal to b plus c so this was a small code snippet was provided and uh, it was asked uh, like uh, pick one option like o n o n um 
and is to 2 0 and 1 so uh, the correct answer is option 2 the reason is that there are two loops iterating n times each the inner loops runs n times and it is a part of the outer loop which also runs n times thus the code inside the nested loop is executed n uh, multiply n equal to n two times making the time complexity of the code o n2 okay um, moving to question number 11 choose the correct option based on this program again it was a java 8 program so if you look at the uh, program uh, the optional was used optional of uh, then 24 then there was uh, intermediate operations were used the filter so if you look at the code um, uh, there is a or else throw which throws a new exception at the end of uh, the sentence and options were provided like this program results in a, compile, a compiler error this program prints 244 4. it will print 24 2 and the none of the above so the correct answer is it will give you compile time error and I have also uh, attached a screenshot of uh, my IntelliJ ID uh, you know uh, so code was giving unreported exception java.link.exception must be code or declared to be thrown so uh, why we will get a compile time error we get because the or else throw method throws a checked exception in this case exception which means that it must either be handled using a try catch block or declare in a method signature using a throws keyword Moving to question number 12, it was a microservices question. Fetch API is a web API used to fetch resources commonly across the network. Which of the following are true about Fetch API? Choose one or more option. Pick one or more options. Option number one was, uh, it promises written by Fetch rejects on HTTP error codes, for example, 404 or 500. The promises written by Fetch resolves on any successful response, including those with error codes. Then uh, to extract JSON data from fetch response, we access its JSON parameter. And option number four, to extract JSON data from fetch uh, response, we call it JSON method. So the correct answer is fetch API. Uh, before moving to the correct answer, one should know like what is the fetch API. The fetch API is a web API that is used to fetch resources commonly across the network. It is an interface that allows developer to access network request in an asynchronous manner without needing to use XML HTTP requests. When using the Fetch API, developers have access to several features that make it easier to access and use resources. One of these features is the promises written by the Fetch function. This promises rejects on HTTP error codes such as 404 or 500 and resolves on any successful response including those with error codes. So these two options are covered. Additionally, the Fetch API allows developer to easily extract JSON data from response objects to do this, developers can access the JSON parameter or call the JSON method depending on their needs. So, uh, these three uh, uh, were the correct answer out of four options. Moving to question number 13, uh, which is uh, again a microservice based question, which helps client application to search for services without hard coding the network locations options were api gateway service discovery load balancer or hystrix so correct answer is service discovery service discovery helps client application to search for services without hard coding the network location a service registry is a critical component of service discovery architecture which is responsible for maintaining an up-to-date list of all available services and their network locations it is a key component in microservices based applications and can be used to register, discover and manage services in distributed systems. Service discovery provides clients with the ability to discover services without relying on the hard coded configurations. Thank you everyone uh, for uh, watching this video. Uh, if you like this, please uh, give a thumbs up and stay tuned for the part 3. Uh, thanks from uh, Java Charter. Um, Bye bye uh, till the time uh, see you for the next video.